Hi, my name is Anne Senkel and I'm here today to talk to you about the status of our transient library. Together with my colleagues Carsten Bode, Jan-Peter Heckel and Oliver Schilting, I spent the last four years refining and developing new components of our transient library. And I'm very happy to show you um, the most important results of our work today um, in this presentation. So let's start um, with a small motivation. As you can see here, there are um, different sectors as power, gas and heat coupled within an integrated energy system by, for example, power to gas plants, gas turbines or um, simple gas boilers. And what we see here when we are looking at current and future energy systems is that they become more and more complex by certain mega trends that are um, the same all over the world. For example, urbanization, um, decarbonization, but also digitalization. So when we as um, system analyzers want to keep up with this challenge, we need to develop models that um, are not only adjustable um, and reusable for different scenarios um, and for different research interests, but also stay comprehensible um, even with a um, growing complexity um, within their modeling approaches. And this is why my predecessors started to develop the transient library um, to allow a dynamic modeling and simulating of those integrated energy systems. And they laid a special focus on power, heat and gas sector that we um, also used and also are looking on. So this Transient EE project that started in 2013, um, developing the Transient Library, um, laid their analyzed focus on the CO2 emission of integrated energy systems. And as a regional scope, they chose the city of Hamburg. So when we started in 2017, um, we used another um, important criteria for integrated energy systems, which is the resilience. Therefore, our um, project name is also Resilient, Resilient EE. And um, a very important thing was also that we wanted to broaden the regional scope and therefore um, we're looking at the energy system of Northern Germany. So um, by broadening the scope, um, we also needed to uh, um, develop more um, energy uh, system models and also uh, redefine the existing models. And especially for the power and gas sector, this was actually quite some work. So, and this is what I want to show you now. Let's start with the power sector. Uh, here we used um, in the Transient EE, um, uh, project, um, we used actually the approach of a um, simple copper plate because the electric grid of Hamburg is quite small and therefore we um, could assume that the transmission losses um, could be neglected here. But of course when we are looking at the northern German uh, electrical grid there is quite more of a transmission loss and this transmission loss is actually also um, interesting and there are several other um, phenomena that we wanted to look at. So therefore we use the, the root mean square approach, which is actually pre pretty common in the electrical um, engineering um, sector. And um, may maybe some of you also know it already from the load flow calculations. Um, and this approach is basically also taking account those alternating currents and voltages. And for us to implement this in the transient library, we needed a new electrical interface. This one we called the complex power port. And um, additional to the values we already had um, implemented in our electrical interfaces, which are the active and reactive power and the voltage magnitude and the frequency, we needed to also add the voltage angle. And this was actually quite some work we um, had to use the equality constraint, which is also um, specified in the Modelica specification. And I encourage you to look at uh, the paper of my colleague Jan-Peter Heckel, that he actually already turned in also in, uh, for the Modelica conference in 2019 um, uh, for more detailed information about the implementation um, in Modelica. 
So with this complex power port, we were able to show these ph phenomena I just talked to you about. And uh, of course, we had to um, redefine the existing models and then ex existing components, but also um, develop some new um, steady state and also dynamic components, as for example, um, some boundaries, the transmission lines, um, transformers between the different grid levels, and of course, uh, synchronous generators and motors, um, both in the consumers um, and the power producers um, models. So for the gas sector, you can imagine that we needed uh, um, to make a similar effort because also the gas grid of Hamburg is quite small in comparison to the gas grid of northern Germany. Um, and maybe as a start first, um, in our models, we use the Clara library. Um, which is a very great library actually um, for pipes, um, joints, valves, anything you can imagine um, for the transport of fluids. And within this Clara library, they use the media data from the TIL media library, um, which we also um, are using in our transient library. But as I know that many of you are also um, using the Modelica media, we also have a, an adapter available in our transient library in case you want to combine your existing models with our models. So, but let's look at the compute or the simulation in the computation we made. Um, first of all, on the energy balances, we now have an isothermal flow um, available, uh, which ex actually helps to reduce the complexity um, of the energy balance um, and is also suitable um, for our needs um, of those uh, big, large regional um, gas grids. We also simplified the component mass balance, um, especially when hydrogen is um, mixed uh, to the gas in the grid. And um, we added a physical pressure loss computation, um, which actually enormously uh, reduced the complexity of the computation and is now actually helping us to be even able to um, yeah, model and simulate those large um, gas grids. Um, these simplification are available in all of our gas grid components, for example, in those pipes, those joints, the boundaries, um, but also the valves and compressors. And we also adjusted um, and redefined our electrolyzer model, where you can now um, choose between different pressure loss um, calculations, between different energy balances and heat transfer um, approaches. And also new in our library is a biogas plant. You can see this here. Um, actually, this was also presented already in 2019. So if you are interested in more details there, you can also look at the publication um, my colleague Carsten Bode made there. Um, so this is for the gas and the power grid. And at the end, I want to show you now a created energy system to give you a, yeah, a small hint of what our transient library um, is able to do for us. So what you can see here is now um, yeah, the simplified um, surface of our integrated energy system model. Um, we start here with a gas grid that's, that has um, several consumers. Um, here in the east, some gas boilers that are supplying heat to um, some um, yeah, um, housing areas. And here in the south, a CCP, CCP plant that, that is also providing heat um, via a district heating network to housing areas, but also power um, to an electric grid. And in this electric grid, of course, there are also consumers, but also several other pro producers as PV plants, biomass incineration plants, um, and of course, um, a wind farm. And there's another coupling point up here, an electrolyzer, which is coupling um, the power grid to the gas grid again by using excess power um, to create hydrogen. Um, so, and as I told you before, we were also looking at the resilience of integrated energy systems. So we were interested in how energy systems are reacting to disturbances. And therefore here we, for example, looked at the breakage of a gas pipeline. 
um, and wanted to know what is happening, of course, in the gas sector, but also in the uh, coupled heat and power sector. So first I brought you here the reactions of the different sectors. Um, at the very left, we have the gas sector um, characterized by the gas pressure and the enth enthalpy flow rate. And you can see, of course, that the gas pressure is dropping um, when the gas pipeline is breaking, um, which is basically always this red um, rectangle um, marked in the diagrams. And with this gas pressure um, dropping, we actually reach a minimum pressure operating pressure, um, which is why the enthalpy flow rate here also drops to zero for those um, consumers in the southeast, which is also the CCP plant. Um, therefore, the heat flow rate is actually also dropping to those housing areas. Um, and the curve here depends um, actually on whether or not there is a heat storage um, installed. The green one is with a storage, the orange one without. And you can also see this effect of the storage here and the room temperature drops. Of course, with the storage, I'm able to um, yeah, provide some heat, even though the heat producer is out of order. And with the orange, um, Consumer, there's no storage, so the heat, uh, the room temperature drop is um, um, a little bit bigger. And what you also can see nicely here is that we have a reheating process um, after the gas pipeline is already fixed, um, but the houses, of course, are still cooled down. Well, and here in the power sector, we have a um, frequency drop, and to this frequency drop, actually. Um, some of the consumers are also reacting with um, some power load shedding. Um, and therefore you can see that we actually are able to nicely look at all those three sectors and to evaluate the system answers um, within each sector, um, which is helping us in our further, further analysis of the resilience of those integrated energy systems. So I hope um, this presentation wasn't too packed with new things for you, but I hope that you can could see that we are now able to model and simulate even large integrated energy systems. Um, and we're actually also able to improve our modeling in the gas and power sector very much. And um, well, for the resilience and stability phenomena, I just go gave you a small hint here. But I encourage you also to look at our publications on this um, um, uh, topic because uh, we also um, had some interesting research results on this. So actually, I want to also take some time for our outlook because right now there are many ex um, exciting things happening um, right around the Transient Library. Since May 2021, um, we are cooperating with the Fraunhofer Umsicht, the GBI Essen and the XRG simulation. And we yeah, came together to uh, develop and to um, yeah, care for the transient library in the future. And right now we are in the process of publishing actually transient library 2.0, um, which will not only have those models from Resilient EE, but also from IntegraNet and future energy storages. And in especially IntegraNet, but also we from Resilient EE, um, we're also looking in the past few months um, at automatic system generations within um, Modelica. And I encourage you to yeah, um, stay in touch with us, ask us if you are interested in any of these topics because um, those 15 minutes we got are not <laughs> even close enough to show you all the things that are happening right now. Um, so this is why I'm really looking forward to the discussion with you and I'm here for your questions. Thank you very much.